everyone. Welcome to Newness of Life tonight. Uh, we are so glad that you have tuned in to our weekly Bible study. Um, we normally call it our, our weekly feeding, and so we are so excited that you are with us. Um, you know, if you don't eat, you starve, and if you starve, you lose strength. And so uh, it's important that we feed our spirit man, that we get our spiritual food that is needed so we can sustain in life. So again, uh, we want to encourage you to get your pen, get your pad, um, so you can take notes, and we're going to learn um, about our authority tonight together. So let's pray. Father, we are so grateful for who you are, and we thank you for this opportunity that you've given us so we can come together and learn about you, learn about your ways of doing things, learn about the kingdom of God and, and all those uh, things that you have promised us in your word that rightfully so and rightfully belong to us. And so we ask you, Holy Spirit, to open up our ears, anoint our ears where we can um, so we can hear those things that you will want us to hear, O oh God, and and even Holy Spirit minister to us as we go through this teaching and um, we can take those things and um, apply those things into our everyday lives. And so we thank you for that. So, Father, I ask that you will anoint my tongue tonight as I uh, speak forth the oracles of God. I think it will be none of me and all of you and all of our getting tonight will get understanding. And we ask it in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Well, um, we want to continue on the subject tonight of discovering your authority. Uh, we uh, started this series on last week. And so we want to continue on because, you know, it's important that we really know who we are. And so I began on last week by asking you the question, do you have authority as a believer that you don't know about? And I think that uh, I, you know, as I was studying um, this topic here, you know, I, I, the Lord just dropped in my heart, you know, we are believers and yes, we are going to heaven, but a lot of times we don't recognize the authority that God has given us. And so, um, if we don't know that authority, then we don't know how to properly use that authority. So, you know, um, we are living in times that are very unpredictable. We got sickness, we got disease, you know, uh, all the stuff that comes uh, with this pandemic. You people have lost loved ones. Uh, people have lost work. Some people have lost their homes, been evicted. There's wars all over this world. You know, technology is changing and that is going to be our new way of uh, doing things um, from now on to Jesus come. We got all of these things that are happening around us, but it's not time to tuck our tail and run. It's time for us to stand up and take control of our lives. And so, you know, um, I was having a conversation with some of my coworkers and, you know, people all over the world are dealing with um, anxiety because of all the stuff that is going on, uh, panic and depression, people walking in fear and disappointment and discouragement. Um, people are sad, you know, sickness and poverty, hopelessness. We got hatred in our country. We got discrimination of all kind, you know, pride, people, you know, walking in their own pride. We have addictions, you know, people addicted to things, you know, just trying to cope with life. And so these things are presented to all of us in life, you know, at some point in time, but, you know, what are we going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? What am I, you know, going to do about it? We can say that we're waiting on Jesus, you know, well, I'm just waiting on God. But, the, you know, the truth of the matter is, is that Christ has already done everything that he's going to do. He has uh, committed himself to fulfilling his promises for us. But what is your responsibility? What will you commit to? And so, first of all, I believe that our responsibility and the thing that we need to, to commit to is that we need to believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Jesus died on Calvary so we can have life and have it more abundantly. What are you going to commit to? Will you commit to believing 
the, pro, the uh, believing everything that Christ has done on the cross for you. Number two, I think we need to commit to uh, finding out who we are in Christ and the free gifts and promises that he's given to us. Number three, I think we need to take control and responsibility for our lives. God, uh, the Bible has already declared that God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. So what are you going to do? What is going to be your stance? So, you know, it is very important for us to know and to understand who we are in Christ and the authority that we have in him. I believe that if you know who you are in Christ and the authority that you have in him, it's going to help you to live the life that Jesus has for you to live on this earth. I believe that it's going to allow you to inherit the promises of God as children of God. Because if you don't know what what has been rightfully given to you, if you don't know your inheritance, then there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. So when we comprehend the authority that Christ has given us, we will never be defeated by all the challenges, all the difficulties that may come up in life. Because God wants us to live a life of victory. He wants us to live a victorious life. Therefore, you know, we can no longer sit back and just let things happen to us and we call it life. Because everything that happens to us, uh, we don't have to receive, you know. Uh, and, and I know we have this cliche of saying it is what it is. No, 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 no. You got to take control of what is going on in your life. It's not what it is what it is. It's what you want it to be. How do you want the outcome to be? Okay. Um, I want to share this testimony with you. I think it will probably uh, kind of um, help uh, set the stage for this message as we talk about authority. Um, uh, some years ago, um, I was presented with, with something that wasn't in my favor. Okay. Um, I received a, a report from the doctor, a bad report from the Lord. I mean, from the doctor, and this report said that they found something on an ultrasound, and it looks like it could be a tumor. And um, and so, you know, uh, they wanted me to come back in two weeks, and they wanted to biopsy the tumor, and you know, to see exactly what it was, you know, if it was uh, malignant or if it was benign or whatever, whatever the case may be. Well, you know. Um, Immediately in my thoughts, I said, mm, this may not be too good. Now, that's what I thought. I didn't say that out of my mouth, but that was my thought. How many of you know that the enemy comes in the thought life, okay? He can't touch your spirit, but he, he likes to hang out in your thoughts. So immediately I thought, ah, this is not going to be good. But in my heart, my heart responded to my thoughts, and my heart said, don't receive that. That's what my heart said. So immediately, I had two things going on in my thought. In my thought life, it was saying, oh, this is not going to be good. But in my heart, my heart was telling me, don't receive what is being said. Now, that doesn't mean that what they saw was not there, because it was. They showed it to me. It was there. It, 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 you know, I wasn't in denial. I wasn't denying the, 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 um, the fact that it was there. But I had to make a decision if I was going to let my life be ruled by facts or was I going to allow my life to be ruled by the truth of the word of God. And so the physician came back into the room and he gave me some instructions, some things that he wanted uh, me to do for the next couple of weeks until my next appointment time. So, you know, um, I left the office. I got in the car immediately. When I got in that car, I opened up my mouth and I spoke what came to my heart in the doctor's office. I said, I do not receive that. And then I began to say what God had already spoken out of his word. 
I began to say, uh, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. I am the heal protecting my health. No tumors and growth can exist in me. I just began to fill my mouth up with faith filled words. Not that I'm so perfect, but I, but I had taken time to put the word of God in my heart. So when this particular, um, um, diagnosis was given to me I, I I wasn't in a position to just receive it I said no because I knew sickness and disease did not come from God sickness and disease it comes from devil from the devil it's a product of Satan so I am the healed protecting my health so I began to say what God said and so um, I just continue on that path until those two weeks. And after two weeks, I went back to the doctor. They did another ultrasound and an x-ray. And guess what? It wasn't there. And so their explanation for it was, well, I think it, it must have, uh, you know, burst on its own and it's no longer there. Well, you know, whatever, whatever they decided, if it burst or whatever the case may be, I just believe that God is faithful to his word. And so I receive the healing power of God right there. And so I'm, I'm sharing this testimony with you, you know, to, to say this is that we all get presented with things, you know, but we need to know what to accept and what not to accept. Everything come to us don't mean that we are to receive it. Some things we have to deny it, we have to denounce it, and we have to say, you know what? No, I'm not receiving that regardless, okay? So, um, and, and the, only, the only way that we're going to know the promises of God is through the relationship, that intimate relationship with him and in his word. So the only way I knew that the healing, uh, that healing belongs to me is because of that relationship that I have with him. Okay. So um, I want to uh, begin tonight by giving you that definition that I gave on last week. Last week, I gave you uh, three different definitions of authority. I gave you a definition from the Webster Bible as well as the Bible Dictionary, okay? So tonight, I want to give you a definition um, by Dr. Miles Monroe. And I think I mentioned this to you last week, but I want to mention to uh, mention it to you again because this definition really um, just touched my heart, and I think it's profound. Dr. Miles Monroe defined authority as permission to create and function. Permission to create and function, and. I, I truly believe that the reason why he said that is because God gave you and I permission to create. We are, be, we are creative beings and we have the power to create. In other words, we don't have to allow certain things in our lives. God has given us that power and authority to create our atmosphere around us, to create those things that we so desire. The Bible tells us that we can call those things that be not as though they are. So whatever you want your life to look like, that's what you begin to say in alignment with the word of God. And so uh, he defined it as um, permission to create and to function. So you and I get to create what we want our lives to look like. We do that through belief and faith in the word. We do that by speaking the word of God. And, and when we do that, that allow, and we allow the word of God to be the compass in life, then therefore we begin to operate the way that God wants us to. And so when we, when we, um, when we talk about uh, operating in the kingdom of God, we're just simply talking about doing things the way that God wants it done. God's way of operating. But I want to take you to a, a passage of scripture, and this is um, Matthew chapter 6. If you would turn with me to Matthew chapter 6, those of you who have your Bibles or your electronic devices. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. And it says, but first. So right there, that tells you above anything else. First of all, 
And then the next word says, and mostly importantly, seek. So first of all, the thing that you need to consider first is that you need to seek. Seek what? It says to seek, to aim at, to strive after his kingdom and his righteousness. Now, whenever we are faced with any situation in life, this is what we need to do. This is your, your answer. Seek first. You're going to aim, you're going to strive after the kingdom of righteousness. That is uh, God's way of doing things and being right. God's attitude and his character in that situation. And everything that you have need of is going to be taken care of. But you first got to seek him. That's the most important thing that you got to do. So whatever problem whatever situation whatever circumstances if it's hard you know even if it's if life is easy and going well the first thing you need to always do is that you need to seek ye first God make sure that you are in alignment with what it is that he desires and what it is that he has already declared through his word amen because him and his word are one and so uh, last week, I shared with you during this entire series, those things that we were going to be learning. And so we established um, uh, some questions that we would try to answer to kind of bring clarity. And so last week, uh, we talked about what is authority. And so this week, we are going to be talking about um, as a believer, do I have authority or do I have authority as a believer? And so that's where I want to pick up tonight. Do I have authority as a believer? And the, the answer to that is yes. As believers, as new creatures, as new creation, we have been put in and given a position of authority and power. This position of authority and power has been delegated to us by God through Jesus Christ. In other words, the authority and the power has been passed on to you and I as children of God. Now, along with this authority, of course, comes certain responsibility. And so I want us to examine what the word of God has to say about that. You know, when uh, we made Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, uh, the word of God tells us over in Colossians that we've been delivered from the power of darkness. Let's just go over there. Let's turn to that. Go to Colossians um, chapter 1. The book of Colossians chapter 1. And let's start with verse 12. The book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 12. And we're going to read 12 and 13. That's uh, Colossians chapter 1 verses 12 and 13. And it reads, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of saints in the light. Let's start right there. Giving thanks to the Father, God the Father, who has qualified us to be partakers in the inheritance of the saints in the light. God has qualified us. Now, that word, um, let me let me finish reading. It says qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints and the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Now, this word power here literally is translated authority. So you could read it this way. You have been delivered from the power or authority of darkness and placed into God's kingdom. In other words, we have changed positions. We are no longer under the power and the authority of Satan, which comes from darkness, but we now are under the power and the authority of Jesus Christ, which is the light. God the Father has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints. In other words, he's made us eligible. It's not anything that we have done. It's not anything that you have done or I have done. God himself has made us eligible 
to receive the power and the light that he's given us. You know, um, Satan desires to um, put fear into us as it relates to all these things that are happening in the earth. That's his, he wants you to, to walk in fear. He wants you to tuck your head and to just allow things to happen. But the good news is, again, that God came that we may have life. And that life and having it in abundance is that you have joy, you have peace, you have prosperity. You know, you have wholeness and, and walking in health, you know, and wealth. That's the will of God for our lives. So, again, Satan may tempt us, uh, but we are not under the power of Satan any longer. He may try to attack you, but guess what? You got to always know that you win. You got to always know that you are victorious in Christ Jesus. Satan is no longer the ruler over your life, and he has no rights over you. Let me say that again. Satan no longer has rule over you and he has no rights over you. God took care of that when he died on Calvary. Okay. So therefore, all the tests, the trials, the tribulation, the bad things that happens in our lives, we got power and authority to overcome. And that's exactly what we're going to do. It's time for the saints of God to rise up and take their rightful place. Amen. Uh, Go with me to the book of Matthew. Let's go to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. And let's go to verse 18 first. Matthew 28, 18. Matthew 28, 18. Say this with me. I have been delivered from the power of darkness. And I now live in the kingdom of light. Amen. All right, Matthew 28, are you there? Verses 18 through 20. And I'm going to read this out of the Amplified Translation. And it reads, verse 18. Jesus came up and said to them, all authority. That's all. The word all means all. Not some, not part. All authority. The authority, all power of absolute rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. All right. So basically, Jesus was saying here, he was talking to the disciples and he was letting the, the disciples know that God, the father has given him all the authority, all the power of absolute rule in heaven and in earth. And so basically, uh, Jesus was trying to get the disciples to know because I have been given that delegated uh, power and authority. You now have that delegated power and authority. And then he said this. This is what I want you to do with this delegated power and authority. He says, go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nation. Help the people to learn of me and believe in me and obey my words. Now, I, you know, I was looking at this and I've read this many of times, but I didn't look at it in that way that God basically was trying to get a uh, message over to the disciples that, okay, I have all the power and now I'm giving that to you. And then I want you to go and share that with other people teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you. In other words, when you go do this, you are not doing this in your own ability and might. I am with you. He says, I am with you always, remaining with you perpetually, regardless of circumstance and on every occasion, even to the end of the age. Saints of God, the same power that God the Father gave Jesus is the same power that he's given to you and I as our inheritance as in Jesus Christ. We are children of the Most High God. We are heirs according to the promise, and we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And because of that, we have entered into a position of authority, not because, again, not because of what we've done, but because of what Jesus Christ has already done. 
So I want you to know tonight before we believe that Jesus has secured our power and authority. He has been given that by God the Father. He's passed that along to you and I, and he's expecting us to use that authority that he's given us. You know, he paid an awesome price on Calvary. He died of a horrible death. Um, he suffered the penalty of our sins. And, and guess what? He has defeated Satan. And Satan is in the pit of hell. So God came as a man on earth to recapture the authority that Satan has stolen. And so therefore, we now have that authority. And so I want to leave here with this last scripture tonight. And I want you to see what God did. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15. And we're going to go to verse 45. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 45. And it says, so it is written in the scripture, talking about it's written in the word of God, it's written in the Bible of God. The first man, Adam, became a living soul, an individual. The last Adam, which is Christ Jesus, became a, live, a life-giving spirit, restoring the dead to life. So in other words, what Adam gave away, God came back again and recaptured so we wouldn't... Um, um, live a life uh, being spiritually dead. So in other words, we live a life uh, with Jesus Christ. Jesus was called the last Adam over into this scripture after he secured the power and authority that he freely gave over to us. It is not enough. And let me say this, and I want you to hear this. It is not enough for us to simply accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, you know, we are held responsible for much, much more. And we can't do anything or we can't do the more uh, if every time we are presented with something that's different or hard or something that we feel like we can't accomplish. You know, you can't roll over and just uh, take it and say no. We, you have to make a decision. We all do. And sometimes, you know, it's easier said than done. But you have got to make a decision that you're going to stand up and take your rightful place using the power and authority that God has given us. You've seen in the scripture where he has given that delegated authority over to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ has passed it over to us who are his disciples. And so he's expecting us to use that authority. And so next week, we are going to talk about the benefits of that authority. And then after we discuss the benefits of the authority, we are going to learn how to use our authority in the earth. Amen. I'm so glad again that you tune in with us tonight. Uh, don't miss next week. We'll come back next week um, at 630 and, and we'll begin to uh, dive dive a little deeper into um you know our authority discovering our authority so you don't want to miss father we are so thankful again that you've given us this time and lord uh, i pray that the, the the hearers uh heard something that they didn't know before father god that they saw something in the word of god that they've not seen before that you are you have spoken to them personally as it relates to some things in their lives oh god and so uh holy spirit we just commit and submit to your authority we commit and su and submit um to the fact that we are going to believe in the finished work of jesus christ and that we are going to take a stand and and walk in the authority and the power that you have given to us as believers and we ask that in Jesus name we pray amen and amen I don't want to leave here tonight without giving you an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior if you've never asked Jesus to come and live in your life and be a part of your life and be Lord over your life we want to give you this opportunity just say this simple prayer after me say God I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins I believe that in my heart and now I'm confessing that out of my mouth I'm asking you Lord to come into my heart and to lead and to guide me into truth 
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you said that simple prayer, then guess what? You are now in the household of faith. You are now considered a child of God. And the same power and authority that God gave Jesus, you now have. And so uh, we want to encourage you, if you would go to our website, uh, that's um, nloc dot. Uh, dash outreach.com that's nloc dash outreach.com if you go to our website you can click on the what's next tab and there's some information that you would like to gather there so you'll know what you need to do next also too we don't want to leave without giving you an opportunity to sow into the kingdom those of you who are members of newness of life we encourage you to to continue to sow your tithes and your offerings those of you who are viewing us by way of web we encourage you if you are a member of another church your tie belong to your local church but you are welcome to sow seed to sow an offering into this ministry we will accept it and we just speak blessings over you right now uh, we thank you for giving and all those who have give we pray that God will give it back to you good measures pressed down shaken together and running over God will cause men to give into your bosom again thank you for tuning in tonight and you don't want to miss next week remember Jesus is Lord I